Hey, this is Matt from Vice's Brooklyn office. We're picking up where we left off with Vice China's story on the culture of insect eating. This is What We Buy, Bug Eating Industry, part two. Hey, it's Josh. We're in the Jiangsu countryside, and I'm about to go pick some bugs to eat for dinner. In China's Jiangsu province, outside of Lianyungang City, there's a worm stirring up an unlikely food craze. Originally known for destroying soybean plants, the dodan is a pest that's transformed into a seasonal delicacy, like lobster. I went to meet Lu Jun, an entrepreneur and dodan lover, who started a bug farm to meet the local demand. Uh,十块钱一条。所以他花几毛钱成本还是比较低的。嗯。我们养的豆丹的第一步就是把豆天鹅的产能卵啊,然后站在这个纸上,然后我们会把这个纸啊放到已经长大的豆叶上,让它去
做一道菜肴提供出来，啊，这慢慢慢慢的，这种就是习惯也就推广开了。嗯，当时就是一般人都会在在野生环境会会抓豆蛋来吃而已。对，当时都是抓的野生的，而且量非常的大，大概是有一年有八万吨。那但是后来好像外面也也不会有那么多，是吧？现在确实是少了很多了。这个呢是从一二年开始的，所以说呃是因为市场的需求大，所以呃豆蛋的那个量会越来越少嘛。某种程度上可以这么说，但这只是因素之一。用我们嗯、呃、的话就是叫人们吃把它吃绝了。Xiao Lu invited me to a dodan feast at a local restaurant. It turns out that cooking dodan is as labor intensive as breeding them. So actually, it is kind of a little bit nasty because you're basically crushing this creature from tail to nose. Bug comes on, guts come out. It looks like the consistency of like egg drop soup or something. I think I liked the look of them a little bit better when they were whole. Now there's just like all this bug pulp in the parking lot outside the restaurant, and some measly white flesh in this basin next to her. Unlike the insects I ate in Yunnan, which were pretty much all deep fried and served whole, the dodan were presented in a way that was a little bit different from how they looked in the field. It doesn't taste super strongly of anything, actually. It's just very soft, kind of slightly chewy taste. But let's try some more. So it's the start of the dodan season now, and that's when dodan are at their most expensive. So this plate is around 2,000 yuan, about、uh, 300 US dollars. So it's not to be wasted. The most disgusting insect I can think of is the cockroach. It was with a mixture of dread and morbid curiosity that I headed to visit Xiaoping's cockroach farm in the middle of nowhere in Hunan. It's actually really nice out here, but then there's this like gray concrete bunker filled with cockroaches. <laughs> hey, 你好，你好。啊，你好。<laughs> 先生，好。那我们我们进去看看。啊，可以。嗯，你等一下站中间一点，别管别人靠就行了。另外，我弄个手电筒，里面是没有光线的啊，弄个用手电筒照一下。啊、嗯，他们也比较怕光嘛。嗯，对他们怕光的。平时里面我们弄的话是不用光的。啊，会看一下。嗯。There aren't any cockroaches like running around here. It just smells like a bit musty. 来，呃，看一下。Okay. All right. This is getting a bit nasty. Oh, it just reeks.、Uh, it's super warm, and there are just bugs like everywhere. Don't worry. Ah, sure. Just only find the bottom. 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 嗯，这种蟑螂的话，基基基本上可以生吃的，都是，对吧？可以生吃。啊、嗯，这种蟑螂可以生吃。啊，这是刚刚脱壳的，没关系的。啊，但是它壳跟能不能生吃有什么关系？它脱壳的时候，所有的内脏啊，都会都会排泄清楚，里面基本上全是蛋白质的。Uh, yeah. So it's like pure protein albino cockroach that just like shed all of its skin.、嗯本来是这样子的，一开始我养的是养土猿的，家里面平时肉种多，肉种土猿嘛。结果我等我养完土猿之后，发现蟑螂跟它是可以一起混养的。啊，养下面养土猿，下面上面养蟑螂，这样的话，它那个温度啊，以及适应性啊、饲料方面，它有个互互惠互利的作用，会更加好，明白吗？
？我做大概现在是到现在已经有五年时间了。一开始的话，把它当然当害虫一样，有和家里面有，只是弄死。现在的话，看起来还有一种亲切感。人们对他认识的话，逐渐在加深嘛。因为那，那你觉得在这里会有多少斤或者多少只这样吗？多少只的话，我就一下也跟你也说不清楚。多少斤的话，大概这一间房出来有五百多斤的样子吧。So like two hundred and fifty, more than two hundred fifty kilos of cockroaches in here.、Mm-hmm. 这里卖出去会赚多少？大概五万多块钱吧。We're in a room full of almost ten thousand dollars worth of cockroaches. Hey, it's Josh, and we're harvesting cockroaches in Hunan to make into powder. Usually, Xiao would drown the cockroaches in boiling water, but power was out in the village, so we had to use cold water in a wok. Because 他们是从里面，他们的细胞里面提取出来的。我是像我们自己说的，我们也说不清。我不是专业人士的话，明白嗯，那如果说有一个订单，然后他们要几百斤，嗯，那能赚多少？基本上我们从养殖蟑螂这一块的话，除了你一开始自己花的饲料成本，以及一开始的那个种虫投入、人工力，基本上剩下的就是纯利润了。像我们的农村地方的话，你它是因为它吃的东西比较随意，呃，普通的青菜、野菜它都可以食用。菜市场里面那蔬菜公司，他们收农户那些青菜以外，他留下那个留下那些菜叶，他都可以供给我们直接弄过来养殖，所以成本的话相对是比较低的。成本比较低。然后员工的话，你们这里有几个人？员工的话就我一个，基本上就是我一家子在看护、看护。一天只要下午的时候喂食一次就可以了。嗯，就一天一次来就。一天一次就可以了。After collecting the cockroaches, we set off to Xiaoping's family home to cook them. It's about seeing the world and trying foods you've never tried before. But this is like garbage. It's really like a hot garbage smell. It smells like New York City sidewalk to me. I just like really don't want to eat this. <laughs> oh god, I really don't want to. This is Josh. This is a cockroach. This is the cockroach farmer. And I guess I'll try one that he raised. Um, it just tastes like the smell of c- 
cockroach. Yeah. 好像不是我的菜。嗯，<笑>不习惯啊。有一点不习惯，嗯，像我自己吃的话，要经常吃，我也有点抵触。像我说，这样平时吃一个下去的话，这样没关系的，嗯，但是让我经常吃的话，我也受不了。Xiaoping's cockroaches are mainly used for Chinese medicine. He grinds them up into powder form to ship to customers from his storefront in the village. I asked his neighbors if they knew what kind of powder it was. No one seemed to really enjoy the smell. Even though I still find cockroaches repulsive, I was still interested to see how other bugs could improve our lives in the big city. Shunzhen's reputation as a startup paradise is empowering a tech firm that wants to create insect-based protein for a sustainable future. I went to meet Katerina Unger, the co-founder of Live and Hive, a sustainable, self-contained solution for growing mealworms in your own kitchen. Hey. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. So this is the hive? Yeah, this is the hive. It starts with the beetles in the top. That's where they have fun, they hang out, uh, they lay their eggs. The eggs uh, then hatch into baby mealworms. Uh, and out of these baby mealworms, uh, the big mealworms um, develop. So that's, that's already close to their end size. Uh, you feed each tray. So in each tray, there's one week of development, which means in the first one, there's uh, week one of mealworms, week two, week three, week four, week five. So you feed each, each tray, you also feed the beetles. Once they are mature enough, uh, then they go into the harvest area. So you activate actually the harvest area. It looks like this. At this moment of time, the mealworms already matured partially into the pupae. Mm -hmm. Looks like this. So it's right. kind of the cocoon. Right. These you put back into the top to restart the life cycle. Uh, and the rest of the mealworms all go through to the second stage and only the, the good ones will crawl across a, a ramp and fall into the harvest area. Mm -hmm. And so when you harvest, it looks like this. Oh, okay. So how long would it take to basically fill this with mealworms like we see here? So the life cycle is uh, about seven weeks. Once you have the cycle full going, you can harvest every week continuously. For being a hardware company, uh, we found that the infrastructure in, in Shenzhen is just ideal for us to do prototyping very fast. Here you order something and then the next day it's, it, it arrives in your office. So prototyping and testing ideas quickly is, is very easy here. I was looking into, into industrial scale meat production, production of, of animal protein. This sort of led me to all different kinds of things. So I looked into microalgae, I looked into lab grown meat, I looked into all different kinds of processes and insects were just, just one of it. So it was just interesting to work with it as a food source and it made the most sense just from a sustainability standpoint. Where do you see insect eating going, say, 30 or 50 years from now? It is a future food in some ways, but it's also a food of the past. Here in China, in, in Africa, in South America, people, people eat them already. Uh, for the next 20, 30 years, I think it's just going to become very normal. You know, insect protein powder next to other protein powder or next to the flour in the bakery um, area in the supermarket and, and people will acknowledge it as such. Katerina invited me to a mealworm brunch she was hosting with some friends. It was interesting to taste how virtually indistinguishable the mealworms were from normal ingredients. Okay, so this is couscous salad with roasted mealworms and feta and olives. Okay, and 
these are white bean mealworm patties. <laughs> it's really, really good. It tastes like a latka. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a vegan for a long time mm -hmm. when I lived in China. Mm -hmm. And I used to eat a lot of that like soy based meat and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And it's really not particularly healthy and digestible. So, so you, you're uh, one of the engineers for the Living Hive project. Yes, that's right. Was it engineering plus insect interest that you had before, or primarily engineering? Uh, my background is aerospace engineering, and I'm really interested in going to Mars and all these things. And one of the things that really struck me is that a lot of protein and nutrients in a very small package. And when you're launching to space, that's something that you have to really consider, right? So. That's something that uh, really made me very interested about that project. Yeah. Like a, a, a big percentage of our customers are, are, are men. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe they're just more interested in new technologies. I'm, I, I'm not sure. But uh, we said, okay, we have to design for, for, their, for whoever they live with, really. That they are fine with it. Whoever is like, you're not raising bugs <laughs> in my apartment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>